guy came out to Ann Arbor, and guess what? Some some of Ann Arbor is here in the studio with us. We're having some fun with the Hands On Museum. You saw what the museum is all about, and now it's time to have some fun with some critters. Absolutely. Joining us now is Nicole Wright, Public Programs and Volunteer Manager. Good morning to you, Nicole. Good morning. And Lana Smith, Wildlife Educator with the museum's sister organization, the Leslie Science and Nature Center. Good morning to you. Thank you. You're here to introduce us to this arachnid, this spider. Right here. Oh, yeah. Has no name, but you were telling us during the commercial break that mm -hmm. TV spider <laughs> isn't moving because she is used to the drill. You're saying that she's used to lights and camera and yeah, in some way she's clap. kind of been doing this longer than I have as a job, if you will. I know it's weird to think that animals can't have jobs, but this one's gone through training to learn to sit here and pose for cameras and teach the audience about what it is and why it's important so it kind of knows what it's doing. It yeah. hit its mark and stopped. I and know. <laughs> I know. It's impressive. So what kind of spider or arachnid yeah. is this? Um, this specific species, if you will, is called a Chaco golden knee tarantula. Now, it's not native to Michigan here. We have a lot of other native species, don't get me wrong. But we actually use non-native species in some of our programs to kind of talk about their native counterparts. Uh, one of the reasons we bring tarantulas for, say, our arachnid-specific programs is because, well, she's big. She's right. about the size of my hand. And what that helps with is you can see the features better. Usually, if we talk about arachnids, for instance, for our Critters Up Close program, mm -hmm. we might use our tarantula or other arachnid species we have to compare to insects, why they might be different, mm -hmm. or what physical features can we use to identify them and more. Then, with this species, you can kind of see different adaptations along their body. For instance, if you look closer, you'll see that this tarantula has hair all over her body, mm -hmm. which is a little different from some other species that we have here, and we can use that to talk about why that's important and how and she uses it to survive. All right, so we'll learn all about this with the at the critters up close program right yeah. yes all right yeah. so Nicole let's bring you in there's also like a crafty part of this too to further our education there is so critters up close is a program that uh, Leslie Science and Nature Center and the hands-on museum run every month second weekend of every month there's always hands-on um, activities and then there's the live animals so it's always kind of a two-part program um, for arachnids month um, we take a little bit of a crafty angle we talk about spider webs and I've got a few pictures here there's a lot of different types of spider webs people might think of that really traditional kind of orb mm -hmm. web, but there's lots of different kinds. Um, so the kids draw a spider web. Um, you can't really see it for a reason. I've got some paints here. Go ahead and paint over that. Okay. And tell me what you see. So this is drawn on here in oil pastel. Um, and these are just watercolor paints, but when you paint right over that, what do you see, what do you notice wow, happens? Oh, it only it doesn't it, it it's kind of like filling in the spider web. Yeah, so you can paint speak. right over that oil pastel, and it's not going to stick. We mm. use that to talk about one of the properties of spider webs, hmm. which is spider silk is really hydrophobic. What that means is it repels wow. water, just like our oil pastel. That's why when you're out in the woods on a dewy morning, you see those droplets hanging on the spider mm. web. It's because that pushes that water away, and they stick together in these little droplets. Right, and and kids and adult kids. Kids like myself, we're very visual. We're kids so of all this, ages. Yeah, we're kids of all ages. <laughs> so we do this every month. The theme for Critters Up Close changes every month. September we do arachnids, but we do um, raptors and mammals and turtles yeah. and salamanders and all sorts of things throughout the year. So it's a great collaboration um, between, it's, a, it's been a great collaborative program and as the Leslie Science and Nature Center and Hands-On Museum um, are in the process of merging, you know, it's a great program that we've continued and are, um, you know, continuing to grow upon that and many other programs that really bring out the best of both, both organizations. Absolutely. So, Tati, yes. everybody watching and everybody in the control room, did you notice mm -hmm. about 90 seconds ago when I reached out to lightly touch the leg and the uh -huh. tarantula? Lannis, Lannis was like, uh. Lannis was like, careful. <laughs> yeah. Is there something that I should know about this? I thought this was like the TV friendly no, it's okay. <laughs> tarantula. It's, it's funny because it's not what you think. Um, one of the reasons we do that is because this spider, like some insects too, actually has the bones on the outside of her body. Oh. Oh, I know all about yeah. that. Oh. So she's very, very fragile. Gentle. I was going to be well, very Well, if you gentle. watch how I handle her, too, I actually never really touch her or pet her in a way. You I always come do with all my that. own. Yep, that's because even if we think we're gentle, it actually can still be harmful for some of our creatures. Now, the other thing, too, is one of the things of my job with the animals that I go with, I do a series of training to learn how to handle these animals. Right. I know <laughs> it might seem silly to think that I have to go through training to handle a spider, let alone yeah. other animals, but I have a lot of 
pressure on me because I have to handle her in a way to where she doesn't feel nervous or threatened. I mean, I'm this giant creature that's handling a tiny spider in her eyes. So mm -hmm. I make sure that I'm as gentle as I can be. And in order for me to learn that, I have to go through my own training for it too. Okay, so <laughs> do tarantulas jump or do they just kind of crawl around? Most of the time, tarantulas just run. They have okay. longer legs what than they, they use run? for their run balance. Toward you? Well, they can run towards or away from it's anything insane. they need to. Most of the time, though, tarantulas, especially one like this size, they're burrowing species, so they prefer to hide or hide under things. As Nicole was mentioning, you can use or draw and kind of create different kinds of webs. Well, tarantulas, and she has a really good picture of one too, one. a lot of them will make these really thick burrowing webs that they use to mm. feel the vibrations of their prey, not necessarily have their prey stick to it though when they wrap it up. So it's more of a protection deal or a way to kind of feel where their prey is coming from. Interesting. Mm -hmm. This is all great. So remind us about the uh, Critters, Critters Up Close <laughs> program. Yes. It's happening this weekend. Where can people get more information? It is. Um, it takes place at the Hands On Museum. You can check out our website, our events calendar. Um, it, it runs from 10 until 4 on Saturday with a midday animal nap time. We've got to give these critters a break. They can't yep. be handled for seven hours straight. <laughs> um, and then on Sunday, we run from 1 until 4, included with admission. So just come on down to the museum, enjoy 250 plus exhibits, check out some cool animals. You know, Leslie Science and Nature Center is right up the street. If mm -hmm. it's a beautiful day, it's a great place to continue Thank that exploration. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Next